Upon reviewing our catalog of videos, uh, we realized that uh, we hadn't ever really talked about bait casting reels, like the specifics of them, too, too much. Nor spinning. And, you know, potentially in the future, we might dive into that. Yeah. But for now, we're just going to talk about casting reels a little bit. Yeah. And not really like a deep dive into casting reels. If you guys want to see that in the future, let us know. But really, we just want to get through this really quick. We just want to go over, you know, like the main components of yeah. a bait caster. You know, people may be using them and not exactly knowing what their parts are. And it's always helpful to have a video to reference if you have a part that breaks. Yeah. Even potentially, if you don't use bait casters yet, like you're trying to get into bait casters, but you might be a little nervous because you really don't understand the different parts. Because... Like, if you're graduating from either spinning or spin cast, those reels are completely different oh, yeah. than a bait caster. So, there's a lot of big changes, and mm -hmm. those might need to be addressed for you. Yep. So, starting this video off, we're going to, well, I'm going to unveil my newest purchase. As you all saw in the video where we were talking about the Hack Attack rods that are an Academy exclusive, uh, I bought a reel to put on that rod, and that is this Okuma Serrano. Alrighty. Of course, I got it into a more cranking uh, gear ratio of 6.5 to 1. But this is going to be our little test subject for showing you all the different parts of bait casters. Indeed. So, want to start off with the thing that most anglers will be grabbing onto for the entire operation of the reel. Yeah. So, uh, I guess we're going to be talking about handles and grips. Yep. Uh, so what material are these handles made out of? The handle is CNC aluminum. Mm, nice. And I like these grips. These grips are a little different. So they're basically wind grips for the most part. If you guys don't know what wind grips are, kind of like that golf type material that you'd see on like golf gloves or uh, even uh, the wraps. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but this is not wind brand grips. Correct? No, this is Okuma's either patented, copyrighted, or they don't really care about the pattern. They just wanted to add some different texture to it. This is proprietary to them. Okay. But, for now. And I'm just learning about this reel, too. This is Trey's reel, so I'm learning about this one a little bit, too, as we go. Uh, but, oh, uh, other than that, they are EVA grips. Yes. They just have the wind style gripping on them. Uh, feels solid, for the most part. And we'll talk more about the frame and the body of this reel a little later, but uh, this, as we said, are 95 millimeter grips. Yep. So good average size. I have this uh, mock smash from Lou's real quick, just to show you. Uh, on, on par, same size basically. Uh, <clears throat> and that really, the next thing I really like to point out is what that is connected to. Star drag. Indeed. Wanna take that? Sure. <clears throat> so, star drag, alrighty, is the clicky twisty little bit that basically dictates on how easy or how hard it is to pull light line out from the reel. Indeed. Uh, it is up to the angler's preference for what application they're doing on how much drag they will have. A lot of people just instinctively just torque that sucker all the way down. They want maximum drag. Me, on certain situations I'll have a lower drag. But think of this as your play the fish or fight the fish and just get it in as quick as possible type of dealio. Um, do you have anything to add? Uh, not really. Uh, I mean, well, we can point out that drag can come in a variety of materials, not necessarily yes. this piece, the star drag. It's really, it's just the knob for the actual drag, the drag uh, uh, discs inside. Yep, seated uh, right, about so, right in there. <clears throat> you can have... Uh, carbon fiber drag yep. or a variety of different other materials and a lot of reels will get into a lot of detail with that stuff but just know that drag comes in multiple materials and depending on that material it can change the durability yes. of the drag and its effectiveness so just pay attention to what materials you're getting into but uh, materials like carbon fiber are exceptional yes and then on the same side of the reel, 
you have your tension knob, all right? This, in essence, basically uh, just is your spool tensioner. It dictates on whether or not whenever you engage your button, if it's going to free spool or if it's going to have more resistance. This is your, let's say, backlash stopper. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's a two-part system, but this is part of your backlash yeah. stopper system. Yeah, Rick. This controls how fast that line is going to come out of your reel. Yes. Uh, so you really need to dial that in when first getting into bait casters, or yeah. you know, every time you go to use it, every time you switch lures, you need to adjust that tension knob, or you will backlash. Yes. Regardless on however you have your brake set. Also, uh, another thing to add, some price points with some manufacturers, you get a tactile clicky Indeed. tension knob. Um, that is merely up to whatever uh, price point you're looking at, like I said, yeah. and where the manufacturer or who the manufacturer is. Same thing can be said about the star drag. Some click, some don't. Be on the lookout for that if that's something that you want to have. Yeah. Now, Logan, I'll let you handle brakes. I will definitely take brakes. Brakes are a very interesting part of a reel. And now, as we talked about the spool tension knob, that controls how fast that line's gonna calm, calm, come off your reel. The brakes are gonna control how quickly your spool stops when your bait hits the water. Yeah. So, as we said earlier, it's kind of a two-part system. You first think of the tension, but then you gotta really consider the brakes, and you also need to fine tune and dial this in every time you switch lures or every time that you're you know basically going to go fishing you want to yep. make sure you have it set you got to adjust for say windage mm -hmm. all sorts of things uh but this is also going to keep you from backlashing yes it just controls that second half of your cast yeah think of it like a tension first half of your cast breaks second half yeah uh i'm glad you had said that in theory like Logan said, the tension knob, whenever you're first executing your cast, that line is starting to peel off your spool. Mm -hmm. That's when the tension knob comes in handy. But as your spool starts to slow down or get slowed down by your brakes, mm -hmm. that's when you really need to find the fine tune these in where you're not backlashing when your bait hits the water. Absolutely. And we will also point out that brakes are more common to click yes but not all brakes do and honestly this clicking does not really matter no it doesn't i mean they're still doing the same job but it does help you as an angler be able to listen and fine tune just a little more uh really let you know all right where do i have my brake set and a lot of times brakes will have numbers yep so that helps a lot more as well uh, but not all reels will. And again, a lot of this stuff depends on price point. Uh, the more you spend, the more ease of use. Yes. I would think you would get out of it. Whether that just be by putting numbers and clicking on there or just actual quality of components. Also, one thing to add about the uh, brake dial is that, in theory, this is completely arbitrary to your company as well. Absolutely. Um and the fact to where here, let's say half is right here on this actual dial, mm -hmm. a half on other reels may not be exactly in the same spot. Right. Other manufacturers may not have the same amount of dots or different numbers. That's about halfway on this mock smash. Pretty close, maybe it's slightly different on here. But again, it really depends on how many numbers you have uh, this is the uh, Quantum Pulse. It's an entry-level baitcaster. If I set it to halfway, I'm roughly in the same spot, but again, not necessarily. And Luz and Quantum are uh, now the same company, so they're very close. Yep. Uh, slightly different. But again, it really depends. And we will also point out there is multiple types of braking systems. Yes. This is magnetic. Yes. Then you have centrifugal. Centrifugal uses basically inertia to stop the mm -hmm. spool uh, based on little pins and stuff that you get. 
and usually won't see centrifugal braking up until higher price points. I know some companies do do it at a lower price point, say 13. Yep. Uh, but you can also have a combination of the two. Yes. Like on the loose tournament MP. Uh, really great reel, but having both the centrifugal brakes and the magnetic brakes really lets you fine tune that. But as we say, if you're a beginner, you're just getting in bait casters, not necessary to have. You're mainly just going to see magnetic brakes, yeah. but you might see centrifugal. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, uh, simply put, as a beginner, you don't need the best and greatest and newest. Never mind the fact, if you do get that, it'll more than likely confuse you even more. Indeed. You know, with that being said, um, the next thing to contend with is how you actually uh, engage the casting of a reel. That's the entire point of these. Indeed. And that is your thumb button. Alrighty? Mm -hmm. Thumb buttons come in varying shapes, sizes, texturing, uh, as you can see. With this Lose Mock Smash, you see it has that si uh, sort of uh, combat grip. Uh, material that comes on the handle, the thumb pads here. Yep. Uh, the Serrano <clears throat> differs in the fact it's just got some light uh, texturing, just some like cuts put yeah. into it. And then same with this old Quantum Pulse here, just has like a little bit of texturing there on the little thumb button. But a button is a button is a button. In this case, it really is just. Now you do want to find one that you feel like you can uh, use particularly easily yeah. uh, that you're not worried about your thumb sliding off of it and whatnot. But really, you're not going to see like a ton of variation with no. your thumb buttons or thumb pads. Honestly, the biggest variation is how uh, tactile and positive click you get. Indeed. And that also can have something to do with price range. Some lower end reels may have a bit squishier of an actual button, whereas this Serrano is very, very firm. Yeah, the whole thing is... Figure out what you like. Yep. It's not necessarily about, all right, I'm just going to use what everybody says is the most effective. You do want to use effective, like you want to have effective components, but you also want to have, uh, you want to be comfortable with it yep. and you want to be able to use it how you want to use it. So mainly focus on that as a beginner, mm -hmm. really throughout your fish career. Um, next up, we'll talk about the frame construction. Yeah, frame. That's like the biggest like, thing, honestly. Quite literally. <laughs> yeah, it, it is the biggest thing. And um, you get two varieties, and there is a price barrier for the most part between the lower and the higher variety. Absolutely. Uh, lower tier reels come with graphite frames. Correct. By and this is generally sub $100. There is a few exceptions. Yeah. But generally under $100 you're gonna have a graphite frame reel. Not to say there is no graphite frame reels that are above $100. There's $200, $300 graphite frame reels. Indeed. And not to say that graphite is not as good as aluminum. It's just, it has different properties. Correct. Um, simply put, uh, we're compar comparing a uh, composite material to metal. And with that, there comes uh, different resiliencies and durability differences, mm -hmm. mainly in the fact graphite under heavy use can fail. But that heavy use has to be very heavy, and a lot of high-tier uh, graphite frame reels have very high-quality graphite to minimize that. Absolutely. And so say you're using your reel for a heavy-duty technique. Frogging. Frogging. Flip, uh, flipping and pitching. Uh, heavy jigging. Yes. You know, stuff like that that's really going to torque on your reel quite a bit. Your graphite frames can have a tendency to uh, twist, to flex, to yep. bow, to get bent out of shape or break. Yes. They can't take that pressure. They simply will just torque on themselves, twist the gears out of alignment, or flat out break. Yeah, uh, they can even uh, uh, bend your pinion. You yes. Know, and, and Bad things can happen. Now, like we pre or prefaced with this, that's not to say graphite reels do not have their place. Absolutely. They're affordable for most people. They are within the realm of acquisition. AKA they're affordable. 
Yeah, they're affordable and they work. And if you get a good one, it will last you. Absolutely. Yeah. Like we said, price does not necessarily indicate quality. It can. Yes. Uh, but certain components just have certain places. Yes. Now with um, aluminum frame reels, it is the direct opposite where they can hold up to more intensive fishing techniques like frogging, heavy jigging, topwaters, uh, you know. But with that added uh, resiliency and durability, you have to pay for it. Uh, aluminum frame reels, by and large, are above the $100 mark. It really starts out with like your SLX, your LFS, those are really your big yeah. uh, $100 aluminum framed reels uh the revo x from abu garcia absolutely uh not that we'd recommend that but no um, <laughs> we just bad luck with it yes and then from the frame you have basically the mechanics of disassembly uh in a later video at a later date we will go through by and large how to disassemble reels but understand that with different manufacturers, you have different procedures of disassembly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And most of the time, you know, it's just different components or ways of removing the side plate. And then lastly, will be extraneous added features that certain manufacturers have invented and then apply to their real lineups. Notably, the T-Wing system on the Tatula CT mm -hmm. or any or, TWS reel that Daiwa puts out. Absolutely. Or the loose speed keeper that yeah. is noticeable or uh, available on like the Tournament MP, the mm -hmm. KBD LFS, those sort of things. Um, Ardent reels have a reel that has a fixed... Uh, yeah, your little line guide. Yeah. It, it, it's solid it's I mean, fixed it doesn't place. move uh now that reel is made for flipping and pitching specifically yeah. uh that's why it's made like that with a very narrow spool so it doesn't really need to move back and forth that's its own thing yes and i guess i lied there is one more thing to contend with just overall real size yeah real size that is a big thing whether that be spool size or actually just physical size yeah. of the reel. Obviously, bigger spool, you have to have bigger reel. Absolutely. Uh, comparison would be like the difference between the Corrado K and like the Tranks, the Shimano Tranks 300. Right, yeah. You know, it, not, notable sizes are 100. Yes. Uh, sometimes 150. Uh, 200 and 300 size reels, but you can also see 400 size yep. and, and even larger. Yes. But those are your most notable. And also you have a uh, real sub hundred like this uh, Daiwa uh, CR series. Yep. Uh, those are 80 size reel. Yeah. They're and just a hair small. And you know, you're getting really shallow spools at this certain point. Now you could go to like the loose, uh, uh, they're skipping reel. Yes. Is it the custom line? It's one of them. Yeah. But it's made for skipping and it has like, like a 25 yard spool on it. That's crazy shallow. But it's that type of reel. It's made for that. It's yes. made for skipping. And when you enter that realm of specialty reels, um, at least we're going to assume that you're a capable individual with a bait caster knowing what you're looking for. Absolutely. These are by no means intended for beginners. Absolutely. If you're looking for your first bait caster, in my opinion, you can't go wrong with a lose a Daiwa. Mm -hmm. Graphite will serve you just fine for mm -hmm. what you're going to be doing. I wouldn't say Shimano. You're not going to find many at like a super budget price point. The SLX is probably like the first really shim good Shimano bait caster uh, that's available at like $100 like we said. Yeah. But $100 can get you between honestly 60 to 100 dollars can get you a really nice entry level Absolutely. bait casting reel. you might go the abu garcia route go the black max uh, yeah. not the best reel in the world but it is a really good starter reel a yeah. very good starter bait caster as a first bait caster purchase that's a good one to go with and if you purchase it in the form of a combo you're getting a 
good rod with it. Absolutely. A very capable This This uh, Quantum Pulse, I think this is a $40 reel. Yep. I, you know, this was one of my first bait casters. I'm, you know, I still have it. I don't use it. I broke it, but uh, it was a very good reel. Uh, the Quantum Pulse, if you get it as a combo, it comes with a just a good standard medium heavy fast action rod. Yeah. You don't have to put a lot of money in it to get good performance. Absolutely. There is always a law of diminishing returns with every Absolutely. thing. And simply put, the more you put into something money-wise, after a certain point, the differences are going to be negligible. Yeah. And you will get a perfectly serviceable reel. Yeah. At this price, yeah. Price. When you start spending money on top of money on top of money, you're really just looking for minute, minuscule differences, and just fine tuning your game. Yep. Now, sometimes it is it worth it to keep expanding your arsenal and growing it and growing in price point over time? There's a good argument that yes, if you're is. fishing to cash a check, no, yes, absolutely. Uh, but if you're just a weekend angler, casual, you just fish. For the love of fishing, it might not be that. Yeah. And with that, I think our tirade and rambling is over with for this video. Absolutely. Uh, we had several interruptions, uh, and we had to cut and con connect. But, you know, overall, I thought we summed up everything fairly well. But you guys let us know what you thought in the comments. Yep. And uh, uh, Sorry also, about the mask beard. Had school today. Had to wear a mask. That's just how it is. <laughs> Um, like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell already, set that to all, does us a big favor. Um, be prepared for the coming months for a review to come out on this here Serrano reel. Going to be using it this spring. And uh, drop a comment down below if you have anything to add about reels mm -hmm. or any tidbits of information. But uh, you got anything? Uh, just uh, we'll end this with a thank you to all our loyal viewers yes. or even unique viewers. If you stay to the end of this. Thank you so much. It really helps the channel. And we hope to see you next time. All right.